Hello YouTube, Brandon here from BitBionic and today I wanted to cover a quick tutorial on how to use PyInstaller uh, for non-trivial applications for something that where you might be using PyQt or WX widgets or TensorFlow um, and you need to build an application for Windows or OS X. You need to be able to deploy uh, without your users needing to install Python manually. Uh, so that's where PyInstaller comes in really really nicely. So it's able to create these standalone executables for all these different platforms. Uh, it works with both uh, Python 2.7 and also 3.3 through 3.5. I will say that initially I was trying to do this with 3.6 and it, it, it did not work well. Uh, so I had to roll back to the Python 3.5. Hopefully they're able to fix that in the near future. Um, so installing this is pretty dirt simple. Uh, installing we just uh, use pip install py installer. Um, I should say here early on that I am uh, making the assumption that you already are familiar with Python, you're familiar with uh, pip, or you're familiar with virtual environments. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to take a lot of time to explain those things. I will roll through them and uh, hopefully you're able to follow along with no problem. Uh, so first I'm going to go ahead and create a virtual environment to demonstrate this. And with the magic of video editing, we're going to uh, fast forward in time. All right, there we go. So we have our virtual environment. So I'm going to go ahead and activate this virtual environment. All right, so now we're in our environment. And the first thing we're going to do is just install Pi Installer. All right, so we have Pi Installer installed. Um, now I have a couple of examples that I'm going to walk through. So first, let's go into our most simple one. And this is a, a simple Hello World app, right? And, I mean, it's um, if we look at this, it literally just prints out a statement. All right, so to use Pi Installer, we're going to just say Pi Installer and give it a wrap. And you can see down here that it creates a build directory to hold all of its intermediate files in a distribution directory. And so our distribution directory, if we go in here, here's our, here's our project. It wraps all this up, uh, packages up Python into it, uh, and it goes ahead and uh, pulls in any DLLs that you need uh, and gives you an executable. Now, if I execute that right now, it's not going to look like it does anything because it's a console app, uh, but I can uh, just go into the disk directory and run it here. You see simple.exe pops up, and if I run it, it runs fine. And so this is deployable. I can deploy this out to other Windows, um, other Windows platforms and, and and it'll run. So let's look at what it did here. If we go into simple app, you'll see there's this spec file that got created. If we open this up, we'll see that there's some configurations here. And if we look at just the help on Pi Installer, there's a lot of different options that we can that we can use. That's not very readable. Let me expand this. There we go. So what this can do, what the help will show us, is that there's a lot of different options that we can pass in here. Um, we're able to pass in options to uh, generate this as a single solitary executable file. Uh, we're able to pass in options for um, external libraries that might be required. We're able to pass in um, data that might be needed um, you know, like a, a custom data that might be needed. And the way that this works, the way that Pi Installer works, is initially when you pass it your main executable file, when you pass it your you know, simple.py or your mycoolapp.py, it basically starts crawling that file, looks for all the imports, follows those imports, and looks for the other imports, and it starts pulling in all the dependencies um, from your Python install. It starts pulling all those dependencies in and packages those up. But occasionally there are some dependencies, some binary files, or there might be some magic that Python's doing. You know, someone wrote where they're they're um, 
uh, dynamically importing something or they might be loading a file and, and, and doing an, an exec on the file. And so what we find then is that, you know, sometimes it's not able to, you know, follow all the different ways that you can get, um, you know, the executable code into Python. Um, and so we have ways to hand it, you know, like hidden imports and, and, and ways to give hints to PyInstaller, hey, go grab this data over here and shove it here because, uh, you know, my program's going to need it. And we'll walk through some of those examples as we go through this in, 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 in some of our more complex examples. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's let's go to a little bit more of a non-trivial example here. All right. So we're going to go to go back out of this app and let's go to a PyQt example. All right. And so this this is just a simple image viewer and I can't take credit for it at all. I just went out and ripped it off of uh, GitHub here uh, with Balboa, PyQt. Um, they had a simple image viewer file here and, and I just grabbed it um, to use as an example. Um, so the first thing we're going to need is, is this virtual environment doesn't have PyQt installed. Uh, so we need to go ahead and install that. And I think this is using PyQt5. All right, so now we have that installed and we should be able to test that by running this. All right, so here's my image viewer and I should be able to go out here to, uh, we'll go grab an image here of the spine cat. But there we go. So that's running good. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and try to install this. So if we go into this, you can see that uh, created our viewer executable and I'm gonna run it and I'll tell you right now it's going to break. Um, on my other screen, something flashed up. So let's go look at what that is. Right. So when we look at this, it's not able to pull in all of its imports. And to be honest, I, I, I you know, did what almost anyone else does. I did a quick Google on this and found out that the DLLs were not getting pulled in for the PyQt plugins. Um, and so the fix for that's fairly simple. Let's go back. We just basically have to give it, a, you know, a path. So we we say, hey, you're also going to go look over here for any um, for anything that you might need. And so I'm going to give it the path back to the virtual environment that I created. And in the lib directory, I have site packages there, and we have PyQt. Whoops. There. So we're saying, hey, Pi Installer, in addition to everything else you know about, go look in here. You're going to see the DLLs that you need in this location. Um, we'll cover that in just a second. And then go ahead and build out our application. All right. So I built that out. So let's try it now. So on my other window, this popped up and the application popped up. So now I have an executable that will allow me to go out and grab an image. There we go. So what about that other image? Or I'm sorry, not the other image. What about the other window that came up? What about the console window that came up when I did this? Right? I have this console window that's coming up with the exe. Well, we can get rid of that pretty easily. If we just add one more parameter here, 
and that is the dash W. And that removes, that says it's a Windows only application, meaning it, it removes the console viewer from the application output. And so now when this builds, it will only give us, yes, yeah, so I want to overwrite. It will only give us the actual windowed application. And there we have it. We have it popped up. There is no console with it. However, you may want the console while you're debugging. All right, so that gives us a PyQt example. Let's go with something more complex. Uh, so not too long ago, I needed to create a deployment of a Keras um, and, and TensorFlow application. I needed to be able to get that out where people on, on Windows could run it. And so I kind of went through the process of, of trying to get this rolling. So we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll duplicate some of that. Okay, so to get started, uh, the first thing that we need to do is actually install all of our dependencies for NumPy and TensorFlow and, and all that fun stuff. And when I was doing this before, I found that pip actually was struggling to install SciPy. And um, I found that the fix for that was to manually download these wheel files. Um, I will post this link in the description for the video. Uh, but I basically had to go here and go download uh, this version of NumPy and SciPy. Um, and I have to basically install these first uh, before I try to install Keras. Um, so that's simple enough. We'll go ahead and do that. And we want, we want to install NumPy first. We actually want to install NumPy first before we install SciPy. All right, and now we'll go ahead and we will install SciPy. All right, and now that we have that installed, now that we can install the rest of the packages. Um, so for this application, I need TensorFlow, I need Keras, I need this H5Pi for deserializing models, and I need the Python imaging library pillow. Uh-oh, let's try that again. What did I do wrong? Maybe it doesn't want comments. All right. So now that that's installed, let's uh, let's talk about what this does. Let's get over to the directory here. All right. So all I did was create a really simple model, uh, kind of a standard. Uh, learning exercise of distinguishing cats and dogs. And all I did was take the um, viewer that we, the image viewer we talked about here, and I basically jumped into the open image section and run the model in the image after it's loaded and changed the window title to dog or cat based on what the model thinks it actually is. Um, so that's that's what it is. Now let's go here, and if I installed all of my uh, dependencies correctly, we should be able to run this. This will take just a second to start up. All right, so here's our image viewer, and I'm going to go ahead and go out to my image data here. And so we'll grab, uh, you yeah, know, let's grab this dog. And it sees that it's a dog. Great. Let's actually put this in the window. And we'll go out. We'll try one more image very quickly. This cat finds that it's a cat. That's great. So everything got loaded. Everything, uh, everything's working there. So now let's work with Pi Installer. Well, so we know that we're using the same Qt libraries, right? So we're going to need somewhat of the same um, installation instruction here, or build instruction rather. So we'll still need this, uh, you know, go out and, and point it to the correct 
uh, libraries for Qt. And then the next things we'll need here is I need to be able to package up this model. So I'm going to add data and tell it that I want to add uh, model.h5. And uh, right now this is in the root directory, you know, with, with the Python script. Um, so, so I'm telling it where I want to grab it from. And then I'm putting a path separator in here and then I want to tell it where to put it in the actual build. So relative path in the actual build. And I'm just going to give it a dot to say, hey, I want it in the root. All right. And now if we do this, I'll, I'll keep this a little bit shorter. If we do this uh, right now and I just say, you know, give it the Python file, it's going to fail. Uh, and the reason it's going to fail is I will end up getting uh, module not found errors for the h5pi. So somehow uh, the h5pi is getting loaded um, uh, a little bit differently than normal. I don't know why there's double spaces in all these. And let's go through and pull these in and we'll just walk through what I'm doing here. So it took a little googling but I found that uh, basically h5pi wasn't getting pulled in uh, and so I pulled h5pi in and then it said, hey, I can't find this package. So the, the h5pi.defs. So we just, I just kept, you know, knocking them down, whichever one it couldn't find. Kept adding the hidden packages in there. Um, and after we got through those packages, everything's good. So we should be able to build this. All right. So we're up and running and we should be able to test it very quickly. So there's our executable. This window popped up over on my other monitor. Again, we can use the dash W to get rid of that. All right. And let's go out here. Let's grab an image, test it. There's a cat. It's gonna put me right back inside that distribution directory every time. Let's try that. There's a dog. And one more for good measure. Let's try this little guy. And there's a dog. So, oh, there we go. I should mention that the documentation on Pi Installer did mention something about uh, obfuscating uh, your code. Um, you know, there was a way to do that. Um, I have not done anything with that, so you know that might be for another day. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this. I enjoyed learning about it. Um, if you liked this, please hit the like button. And of course, if you want to see more from us, uh, please hit subscribe. And until then, have a great day.